Hello, my name is Elijah Wells, and today's review is The Matrix Resurrections. The story, the story is, taking place 60 years after the events of the original trilogy, Mr. Anderson, also known as Neo, played by Keanu Reeves, is now uh, living as a games developer who developed a game called The Matrix. However, he cannot dis distinguish from his dreams and his hallucinations and uh, from his reality, and still questions whether he's become of his creation. Well, of course, uh, Morpheus com comes back in, and so as the rest of cr uh, the crew who are sent, uh, rest of the sentient crew come back in to re rescue him from the Matrix. Well, well, completely out of the Matrix, uh, Neo uh, must rescue Tr Trinity from the Matrix, thus trying to completely uh, destroy the Matrix once and for all. Directed by Lana Wachowski of the Wachowski Sisters, uh, the movie, of course, it, it has some gorgeous uh, cine uh, cinematography as well as some beautiful uh, fa action scene and some interesting philosophy. Since the concept of the Matrix is not just based off like animes like Akira or Ghost in a Shell, but also based off one of the most influential philosophy writings of all time, the Allegory of the Cave, or known as Plato's Cave, which is you're basically in this cave. You're you're glued uh, glued in the back, and you only watch uh, what's presented to you. But if you leave the cave, you 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 are burned by the sun. But if you return to get to the cave, you unfortunately will be seen as the mad person, which is uh, some interesting reading since I did at uni. Uh, of course, the story is bound to alienate some fans. Uh, not me particularly. Uh, but what can be a bit alienating about the plot is that it's trying to over, uh, do over meta the the lore of the Matrix. Like, it's now the video game and it's going to have its fourth entry, the video game itself. So, it's pretty much uh, being uh, the, uh, a weird Matrix within the Matrix within a Matrix. It's almost like a paradox of a plotline that's going on. Which can be a little bit confusing for some fans, and also isn't it isn't definitely like a full retread of like a lot of movies where it just basically ah it's the first film for like twenty or thirty years and we just do the exact same thing and we learn nothing from new film characters except they kind of just did the exact exact thing. But the Matrix Resurrection does not do that. Like. Neo literally thought he took down the system in this in, revela in revolutions, but it turns out it's still up there. Uh, only this time, it's been rebooted uh, to make it completely indestructible at best. I think was obviously one of the coolest scenes in the movie. It's definitely the third act uh, where uh, Neo and Trinity literally fight off a whole hordes of uh, of, the, of all these bots that have been hacked by the Matrix fr uh, mainframe. And uh, they're uh, pretty much going towards both all of them are uh, going towards Trinity and Neo like zombies, like a zombie outbreak. Like it's kind, of, it is kind of legit terrifying if you kind of like tune in or something like. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Ooh, okay, ooh, telekinesis and zombies. Like it can be a little bit ridiculous at, at best for some fans, but again, this is honestly a really cool scene in my opinion at best. Like. I thought that scene was particularly cool, and also the opening scene where one of the new characters like uh, uh, witnesses the opening scene of the first Matrix film, like uh, acts like spectator until there was a complete a uh, botch up, so she has to like run into the Matrix at, and run in and out and make some errands. So it gets a titty bit complicated, but it is actually some pretty interesting stuff. Okay, there's a couple things that I found uh, weird in a bad way about the movie, like. They do this thing where they flash back and forth through the trilogy and this uh, this film, particularly when it's like complete deja vu, like he's been there before, or some some precog uh, a crap that just happened. Like I think they, I think it's just uh, feels like callbacks from, from the original trilogy, but I feel like it, it could have been done a lot more creatively. It, it just comes off like, oh wait, I've been there before. Like it, it happens like numerous times throughout the movie, like, they actually use, like, clips, again, from the original trilogy, and, like, wait, that actually happened before, like that. Again, I'm, I'm saying, I did say earlier that it's not a plot for plot, a plot for, for plot, uh, retread or reboot or anything, like, it does, 
do a lot of things differently. But I think uh, the this weird uh, going back and forth with like uh, footage from the trilogy is a little bit weird. The writing uh, again, one of the Wachowski sisters, uh, a bit of a weakness they have, but uh, it, it does inject in some humor here and there. But I think the writing is. Isn't as solid as the first movie, which is one of my all-time favorite movies. Like it could could have done with some improvements. Like it isn't uh, I just wish it wasn't like too overly expositional, uh, which is uh, like a massive problem, particularly in films like Jupiter Descending, where it just focuses way too much on exposition. And and one last flaw I had with the movie is just this, the camera work and ed editing. Like it didn't feel as smooth. It didn't feel as uh, controlled, like uh, particularly in the trilogy. It it didn't feel like it just I felt a bit more flashy and a bit more actiony. It just just not something about the editing and how, how it was shot just didn't feel right for me. Like it just uh, it's, it's just nothing fe that feels a little bit reminiscent about it. Again, the action scenes are great. The cinematography is great. The direction is great. The ideas are brilliant, and I think there's. One other thing which I really liked uh, as well, like Keanu Reeves uh, does a great job in the movie, as well as Neil Patrick Harris, John Van Gloff, and as well as Carrie Ann Moss, who do make in some incredibly great performances here and there. And also, the movie has this slightly weird aesthetic, which I can't, I can't really like. Like in the so-called modern world, it is mostly like late twenty twenty tens and early twenty twenties aesthetic, like the present day aesthetics. Like the way it's filmed, the way it's shot, and all that. I think, uh, and also when it when he's plugged back into the Matrix, it's it, there's the overall feel from like like I kind of get this vibe of like late nineties, early two thousands, particularly when the Matrix peaked around that time. Yeah, I think it's like how it was like shot, how the how it's how it looked, the mise en scène of the movie, like the overall feel. Like I feel like I'm I'm watching like. Uh, I feel like uh, new footage from uh, from the original trilogy. Like it just, I can't, I can't feel has that flair to it. Like this early two thousands, late nineties flair to it. Although the story can be a little bit hard to, for fans to swallow at best, and the writing to be very expositional, and the uh, the camera work and the editing maybe tattoo over the top for my liking. All in all, this is a a very worthy sequel to one of the most iconic movies ever made. The performances and direction uh, were brilliant. Uh, the score as well is great. The action the action scenes in the movie, the mise en scène, the production value, the cinematography are just brilliant. It kind of uh, uh, revitalizes, if not the most important, one of the most important franchises out there. I feel like I have to give this an 8 out of 10, like I actually uh, pretty enjoyed it. I think this is probably one of my, uh, if not my favourite Matrix sequel. Uh, I think it's better than Reloaded, it's definitely better than Revolutions. Uh, this is a better Robbie sequel. This is Elijah Wells, like this video, subscribe, comment down below what you thought about the movie and also follow me on Twitter and Instagram and this is Elijah Wells and bye.